A little background on this project before we get started into the details. A friend of mine bought a Colt Commander on the used market that was in pretty mm, not great shape. And it was in not great shape for two reasons. One, it was just kind of grimy, dirty, a little rusty. But what really bothered him about it was the previous owner or one of the previous owners had engraved their initials in the rear right of the slide in a pretty gaudy manner. And as far as he was concerned, that really kind of ruined the gun for him. But he got it at such a dirt cheap price that he was willing to let this be a place for me to experiment and learn. So as far as he was concerned, he either got some cool free work out of it or something that he already considered basically trash got trashed. And so here we found ourselves. You know who else lets me experiment, even if I break stuff sometimes? Speed Tiger, and I think that's pretty nice of them. Everyone that watches the channel knows that I'm a big fan of the concept of necessary fidelity, so let's talk about the fidelity of my starting model in order to make this work function. So, a 1911 slide, we probably could have gotten away with some surface engraving or something like that without having a high fidelity model. However, in order to get rid of that engraving, I kind of had to take a chunk out of the rear, and so we were talking about adding large features elsewhere to balance out that removal. Um, so large features ended up also meaning porting in windows, as you can see here in the front of the slide. And so I had to have a pretty decently accurate representation of this uh, slide so that I didn't make mistakes. And so our necessary fidelity here wasn't just the general shape of the slide, but it also included the location of our breach. It also included the opening at the front and how, how far back it went so that when we did our, our porting, we could, or our windows, we could see how deep we had to go. And because we ended up also matching the window aesthetic here to the scoop at the front of the slide, Obviously, also, we had to model that in. So although we don't have every single feature of a 1911 slide, it does have a lot of them, including the fact that 1911 slides actually taper. It is thicker here than it is down here. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. It, the bottom and the top are not parallel to one another. All right. The design is the same on both sides, um, and it avoids any writing that I saw on the slide, such as like model numbers and branding and things like that. So we're only going to pay attention to this one side and then just understand that it is repeated on the other in the exact same manner. I also want to point out that because we're starting with an object that is already a very particular shape, I modeled the slide and then I saved it off as a base feature. Um, if you don't know what a base feature is, it means that you can copy a body that you've created um, and just paste it like you would a normal paste in any other application. Um, it doesn't keep the full history of it. Um, it basically drops it as a quote unquote base feature. Um, and you can do that by just creating a, uh, a base feature right here and you'll just copy that body, paste it, and that allowed me to then go modify the actual body where I'm keeping the full history, but now I have this untouched slide that I'm gonna use as the material for our cam work in a minute. Really the stuff that we wanna focus on here is our lightning cuts and the windows but I'm also going to turn on this set of features that I have suppressed in the timeline. And the reason for that is those features are the serrations of the slide. I wanted to be able to model those serrations to see how my idea would look in real life. But when I went to go do the cam work, I suppressed those features 
because I want to cut this line as a straight cut. I don't want the machine to try and deal with this complex uh, geometry. But this allowed me to see that my design was gonna work out where I set the depth of this slot to not being as deep as the uh, serrations so that it kind of just cut the tops off and left some troughs uh, of the original look. I thought that would be kind of cool, and so I wanted to mention that. But let's go back and suppress those, and we will take a peek at our cam. And I'm gonna start with the setup. As you can see here, we're gonna be clamping it into a vise. I'm going to have, um, I'm actually gonna use my parallels turned on their side so that I have a nice flat section that I can have ride underneath the entire slide uh, up until the rounded section. If I tried to use them as parallels across the faces of the two jaws, um, the slide is rounded over here, so that parallel wouldn't work, hence why I'm putting them on their side. But we're gonna set our zero to the back corner of the slide on the top, and this is where you see what I meant with my mode for my stock is I used a solid, and then the solid I selected was that base feature, also known as the completely untouched slide model prior to all my aesthetic changes to it. The first thing I did though was I went and I cut this rear section, and I started here because I had used a wiggler in 0.1 inch increments walking up the back of the slide clamped into the vise. I had used that to get what I thought was the curvature of the back of the slide, because it is a fairly complex uh, shape, if you look at the back of a 1911 slide. I started with that section because I wanted to walk further and further out, so I actually had an offset set on this. And the reason for that is it allowed me to see if, as I walked further and further out, if I actually was in line with this back edge with my design. I was lucky it turned out that I was, it turned out fantastically, but just FYI, that's how I found that curve using my wiggler, uh, marking down the coordinates when it pushed off the line, uh, every 0.1 inches moving up, and then just to double check it, I edged my way out with offsets uh, further and further. All right, but now that, I, now that I know that we've got it correct, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and use the largest bit possible for a lot of this work. Um, and in this case, it's a eighth of an inch four flute bit. All right, here is the bit that we're gonna be using. It is a four flute with uh, a coating called Altibin. That's the acronym at least um, from Speed Tiger. It is purposefully designed for uh, steels, specifically high hardness steels. And um, it's good for stainless steel as well. So all the kind of stuff that you would be seeing in gun slides across the board, uh, that's what we're using it for here. You can see that for my preset, I'm using my 17.4 stainless finishing since we are only going down uh, a depth of about 10 thousandths of an inch. And I'm gonna leave 10 thousandths of an inch uh, along the outside as well. And all I've done is I've selected that whole section there. We can see that that eighth of an inch bit is not large enough to go down into that tail uh, that we have. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're then going to follow up with that same exact set of settings. Um, I don't think I showed you the aw, uh, the load, the optimal load of 10 thou is what we're, we're working with here. Um, same settings to clear out my, my window area.
I'm going to actually go around and I'm going to finish up with a 2D contour, um, again, using the exact same presets to pull off that last 10 thousandths of radial that I had left around the edge. And I'm then going to, again, use that big bit to get that big window with a adaptive clearing path. Here I am using my roughing preset for 17.4 stainless. Uh, you can see the details there. same pattern you see the the theme here I rough with adapting I finish with a 2d um, contour I'm then going to do the small window I ended up not being able to do a adaptive clearing here just because the window compared to the diameter of that bit was so small that it just wouldn't allow for it so I did a contour with a ramping down pattern, which you can see uh, here, I believe. Yeah, I had a two degree ramp down, and that's how I cleared out the bulk. But again, I then followed it up with, you guessed it, 2D contour path to clean out that last 10 thousandths of an inch of radial. switched out to a smaller bit. Let's take a look at that. It is a bit from the exact same library. So again, four flute Altibin from Speed Tiger made for the same purposes. It's just going to be a sixteenth of an inch. And so we will have some different feeds and speeds, which you can see here, but I'll talk through which ones we use. For this particular path here, what we are doing is we are now going to go around and fully clear out um, this section using this smaller bit. Notice how I've checked rest machining here and entered the diameter of the previous bit that we used to clear out the large section. That's going to make it so when you see the tool path in just a second, for the large area, it's going to only focus on cleaning out those corners with the tighter bit before going down the tail. We are going to leave about 5 thousandths radial that we again will come up back around and clean. Um, but that is what we're doing here. And that is what finally allows us to get down into this long path here. I did not do that as an actual slotting path for the main clearing. I did come back and again did those edges um, with a finishing path. In order to get that look that I talked about earlier where this little tail um, goes down 
about halfway through those serrations to leave that cool effect that I was talking about, I did actually make this section 20 thousandths of an inch deep, whereas this back section was only 10 thousandths. Because the purpose of this was just to get rid of that engraving. I didn't want to um, take more material than necessary for the job. Because again, think about what's behind this area. You've got your extractor um, in a channel down here, so I don't want to take too much material. You've also got your your rail on the inside of the slide here. So again, I'm only taking material off where it's necessary for the aesthetic that I'm trying to get and the job that I'm trying to do. So that's why just this section here of the tail where the serrations start went down an extra 10 thousandths of an inch to a total of 20 thou. You can see here on this that I did do my 17.4 slotting. And the reason is that's all I could get away with to get down in there. We were gonna be cutting a fairly wide uh, percentage of that bit. And the way that I managed to do it was again through ramping. So I have a two degree ramp down. And that's why you see as we go, it's going to follow that red line and basically ramp as it doesn't almost full slot and then clean up an edge, almost full slot and then clean up an edge. That's it, that's absolutely everything. Let's take a look at how this uh, looks at the end and then we're gonna sandblast it and see how it actually cleans up. I think that turned out great. Yes, we can see some pattern on the floor from the milling, but that is to be expected with all milling operations. The key will be whether that blasts out. I actually, based on feeling, I think that would polish out. But since this is getting Cerakoted, we will do the will it blast out test to see how clean our milling was. I think the windows turned out really nice. Obviously, they're on both sides here. They avoid all of the the lettering and iconography on the slide. And I'm actually extremely happy with how that idea on the serrations turned out, where I went deeper but not fully through them, so you kind of see those lines at the bottom of the troughs. I think that's a nice subtle detail. And there you have it. Not only did we get rid of all the floor marks on all of our milling, and we have a perfect finish. Pretty much everywhere I've looked, it's perfect, it's beautiful. But that blasting, except for a couple scratches on the slide, it really brought this thing back to life.